All right, so we talked about the different types of values that can be stored uh, in our objects, but let's see how we can store them. Okay, so this is the class of an object. The most simplest storage for R is a vector, which is essentially just a sequence of things. Um, other classes that are a bit more higher dimensional are matrices, arrays, factors, data frames, and lists, and we'll go through uh, each one of them to see how they're different from each other, but and what kind of role they can play in our um, um, workflow. So uh, it's important to know what class your object is because R is an object-oriented language. So depending on the type of data it is, it will do different things. So even simple things like print. If you tell it to print uh, a data frame, it's going to do a slightly different thing than printing a vector. Okay, or plot. If you tell it to plot a matrix, it'll be different than what it would do if you told it to plot a simple vector. Um, <clears throat> right, so just like the plot function, you can unclass something, which makes it into a simplest uh, form, which is basically a vector, uh, if you ever need to do that. And sometimes you do. So let's start with vectors. There are simplest, most basic form of uh, our data structures. And it's essentially a sequence of data. It can be just a series of numbers, a series of characters, or logical. Those are the three different modes that we'll be basically working with in, uh, in the course. And if you just have one word, then it's basically a vector of length one, right? So there's nothing that is of no length. Uh, and then you can create a vector by using this C function. Okay, so you basically use the C function and provide it with the, all the arguments or the values you want it to store in a vector. The rules are that the elements of the vector must be of the same type and mode, right? So that means they all have to be, let's say, numer numerical, or they all have to be characters, or all logical. If you mix them up, it will take the more generic uh, term. For example, if you mix numbers with characters, it will convert the numbers into characters because it's easier to do that. Otherwise, it will simply complain. Okay, uh, and also you can you have to again put the characters of the words in quotes, right? Because if you don't put quotes, it thinks there is an object or an element inside of the R environment, and it's going to start looking for it. Okay. Um, and whenever you have missing values, they are represented by NAs. Now, NA means not available. Uh, so this looks like a character. It looks like a word, but it has a special meaning. So capital N, capital A means not available. So it, R knows that this is a reserved word that you can put into a, a vector of numbers, and it won't think that it's a word. It, it knows that it has a special meaning that this value is missing. Okay. Uh, in some other places you might hear of null or things like that. Basically, it's a placeholder for those values. Um, character vectors, right? So this is basically, again, you got to put quotes around them. Um, <clears throat> you could put both of them like this. Uh, those would be two different elements. We also have situations where you might want to put a special symbol inside of the character vector. You can imagine what if you want to put a quote inside of your word, then you have to use these escape characters. These escape characters tell it that, tell R to use this phrase or this term as it is. Don't use the R meaning of it, use it as a backslash. Okay, similarly, you can put quotes around it. Um, the slash N means a new line character. A new line character means as if you're pressing enter and it goes to the new line. Uh, you can also have tab characters uh, provided there. There's also this backspace character that I've never used, but who knows, right? Now, logical vectors is basically what it sounds like. It's a series of values which are just trues and false. But you do have three possible values, the third one being, again, an A. So a lot of times you will see people just put T or capital F, that's fine. But generally, I see the full word true, false, or an NA. These are easily generated by using conditions. <clears throat> so example, if I have a vector x, and I ask for all the values in x that are greater than 13, 
then it'll give me a true false for every value in x that is greater than 13. Okay, and then it'll be false for everywhere it's not. And for any time it's missing a value, it will just say na because it doesn't know. Uh, you can have less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. You can also have exact equality if it matches. Remember, these are two equal signs. Be careful, this is different than a single equal sign. Remember, it's assigning. So if you accidentally leave out one of the equal sign, you just reassigned your entire variable, right? So just be careful. Um, and of course, you can say not equal to. Uh, and then you can also use Boolean, where you can use an and percent to represent con two different conditions, or a pipe, a vertical bar, as an or statement.